You love plants? I love plants. Taking care of plants is not that difficult. And I'm going to help you fall in love with plants all over again. I'm Vinayak from Lazy Gardener and I bring to you Houseplant Masterclass. A series of 5 classes held live over 5 weeks starting 7th June. I get a lot of queries every day from concerned plant parents and I always desired what if we can teach the basics, the reasons why plants need light, watering, how to select better plants, everything from basics. I want to teach you how to know for yourself what does your plant need. I'll teach you the basics and things that will make your plants dance, sing and thrive. So for happier plants, join the free Houseplant Masterclass. Hi, I'm Vinayak from Lazy Gardener and you are watching Houseplant Masterclass Episode 1. First of all, thank you so much for everyone coming out. It means a lot. I was just posting on Instagram and I'm really so elated to see such an active chat. So let's start. Let's start about plants and let's start from very basics. I want to start today by asking what really are plants? And before we do that, here is the plan for today. So uh, this is episode one, the plant basics. It's a five episode series, as you just heard in the intro. Today, we are going to talk about what are plants, understanding light, understanding water, and then we are going to talk about origin of plants. And I know you might be thinking some of these topics you might have heard before, but trust me, this time it goes much deeper. So what really makes plants plants? If I put it differently, what is the difference between plants and animals? And it's important to understand that because only then we are able to really go into an understanding of how we should take care of plants in a different manner. So plants are organisms that create their own food. And how do they create their own food? This is a process called photosynthesis. It is very unique to plants. So this is a diagram, you must have seen it and studied it in the, your classes. And I'm, I'm just going to take you a bit back to your schooling days uh, for a little while, but trust me, it's very important. So you see here, what's happening? So plants are taking in carbon dioxide, they're taking in sunlight, they're taking in water and minerals and nutrition. How they're taking in water and minerals, they're taking them that through the roots and the light and the carbon dioxide they are taking in through the leaves and together with all this they make their own food this is extremely important how many times do we water plants we say the plants have dried up but not understanding why were we watering them in the first place and this process just keep this in mind this is going to be foundation of today's class and two key points here is for photosynthesis, we need light and water and with light and water, photosynthesis happens and plants make food. What does that mean? Let's take an example. I was just thinking and as I was preparing my coffee, I, I was thinking many of you might be enjoying tea with milk, right? In just imagine you run out of milk. At that time, irrespective of how much tea leaves and how much sugar you have, you can't make tea, right? And if I keep giving you more of sugar and tea leaves, does it serve your purpose? Or would you have accumulation of the tea leaves and sugar and not doing anything actually without milk, assuming you want milk with your tea? That's the same case we have to understand when we understand plants. It's easy to say overwatering. I have said it, I have tried to say it repeatedly, 
to emphasize the point but if we gather today here let's look at it a bit more deeply if we are not going to give plant the light we can give all the water we want it's not going to use up that water and one of the things that i want to just uh, take away as a myth is uh, that water we indoor plants need less water plants inside your homes need need less water because there's no evaporation that's not the thing the main purpose of water is not to sit in the pot and just get evaporated the main purpose is that the water gets used up for photosynthesis to create food for the plant to grow but if we don't give them the complete thing the rest of the parameters if the light is not there the water is not going to get used up and just remember this this is going to be very important thing as we are going to discuss today and just keep this in back of your mind and now i'm going to take two topics one is understanding light we are going to then understand water and then we are going to understand the plants that we at home and what we are doing right and what we can do uh, what we are doing right or wrong and how we can change that for better plant health have you heard even me talk about bright shade does bright shade make sense to you there are two aspects to light when we talk about plants one is duration and the other is intensity just think of it this way that if you were to fill a water tank how much time you are going to get water and with how much pressure you are going to get water that is going to determine how much total water you are getting that's the same thing with plants just look at the whole monthly period and then say how much intensity of light am i giving the plant and how much duration is that intensity lasting and we'll come to that but before that let me give you a very simple understanding of intensity of light hello <clears throat> it's very easy to say an indoor a uh, place this is my balcony i just took this video today morning and you see on this side of the wall there is bright sun but if i look down there are patches with total uh, shadow areas and then i just move slightly to my left and i have a under a space below a, a staircase and there is decent light there but only for 2 hours in the day and then if i just turn around on the other side of the wall this plumeria or champa enjoys really amazing light but if i go deep here down there that's where i keep my maranta and zizi plants uh that's a shaded area you see that money plant that's happy that's a happy money plant in that just one space i have not even taken a step i have just moved 180 degree uh in that same spot and we can see such a variation of light and the same thing happens indoors let me just take you through another photo that i took uh, in the morning and this will give you an understanding of how light changes in the same room almost the same walls and how that is going to change everything for your plant and here's a very simple trick to measure the intensity of light you take a pen or any so i've taken pen in this case but you can take any object which is vertical now let's start from the rightmost do you see a clear dark shadow there harsher the shadow or more well defined the shadow that means brighter the light is now on the left side in the middle you can see it is a moderate light this is uh, inside my home and it's getting moderate light because this wall is opposite to the window and you can see there is shadow but the shadow very soon diffuses out but then on the extreme left you see low light on the low light basically there is no defined shadow and here's where things get interesting can you guess which wall is my window on is my window on the moderate light wall or on the low light wall my window is actually on the low light wall that's why all the light falls on the opposite wall which is getting the moderate light <clears throat> so next time any time you hear bright shade what you should understand is 
It is shaded from direct sun, so no heat, no sunburn or things like that. By the same time, it is bright enough to give you a shadow. That is an important thing. And try it out. Try it in different places of your home and you'll be surprised. Today, while I was recording for this, I went on putting my pen at different places on the wall. And you know what I found? On the same wall, the shadow was changing. Why? Because of the height of the window. What does that mean? My money plant can get very big very soon, but after a certain stage, it is not going to grow anymore because then it is not in a bright shade anymore. What we understand is light for plant essentially means the duration and intensity of the light it is receiving. And the second understanding is the brighter the place, the more defined the shadows would be. Now let me just uh, <clears throat> step back and talk about plants which we keep inside our homes. What plant do you feel would actually love lesser light? Or do you feel there are plants which would do better if they are put in lesser light? And hold on to that thought, we will come back to that and till then I will take on another thing which is a tip I think we have shared many times but just for everyone who is here, if you are in northern hemisphere, take out your phone, you have a compass app. You have a compass app, right? Now, the southern side windows will get direct sun, right? So you just need to place your phone. Now I can see this is north. So ideally, I should put my plants on this side where there are southern uh, windows. In northern hemisphere, southern slopes, southern sides will get direct light. In southern hemisphere, that will get reversed. So these are the three aspects when we say A, light is not same everywhere inside. The intensity and duration of light matters. You can measure your light very easily. And before we go any further, here's a message for you. And then we'll continue on two very important things. That is water. And after that, something extremely important. I know there were a lot of chats saying, will you talk about succulents? Yes, maybe. Basically about what is succulent, how to care for it, and all other plants too. So after this message. Okay, welcome back and let's talk about water. We are still at photosynthesis, right? And why the plants need water, I think we have established now. They, the role of water is not to sit there and evaporate. But there is one more way that plants lose water and that is through leaves. It's known as transpiration. And uh, this rate keeps changing depending upon the humidity in air, right? So essentially there are three ways that the water that you are giving to the plant gets used up. One, it can get evaporated. That's okay. Just from the surface, it can get evaporated. The second one is the plants use it up. And that's the main purpose. Plants use the water up. And then the third one is plants absorb the water but they lose it to air. So these are the three ways. Let's start with the third one because that is going to be extremely important in general for care of plants. Why plants le uh, lose water through leaves is highly uh, dependent upon the humidity or relative humidity in the air that surrounds the plant. Now if they keep absorbing water and losing it from leaves, then they won't have enough water for themselves. And that's where 
the issue comes inside our homes we we tend to have relatively dry air it's summer and i get this question a lot and that's why i started with this point people ask me what would happen if i keep a plant in an ac room and the whole idea of this master class was can we teach the basic and you can look at the problem statement and join them together so what does the ac do it makes the air drier right ac takes the water out the pipe it it fills up the bucket with the water it extracted from air so it's making the air drier now is it great for plants not really but can plants survive that yes depends from plants to plants and that's what we'll discuss in origin of plants but whenever you look at a problem like this so what you need to understand is always look at light and water first how is a certain situation going to change the light and water now say you have a plant where you have watered and you feel that there has been overwatering now there are many ways to deal with it you can repot the plant you can put it in dry soil but what can be an easier solution an easier solution can be to move it to a brighter place so that now it has more light to use up that water and probably it will use it up in a much faster manner and then we can decide what to do with it so that's the kind of problem solving that we are looking for and now let's start with asking about water in terms of when to water so when do you water do you water it weekly or you water it daily once in two days twice in a day when do you water slide it on up there's a simple way to understand this is a trick question i i know i ask this always if you said any of the things like i twice a day once a day every alternate day that's not right you can't fit plants in your schedule right plants would have their own schedule and just like during lockdown or so we get lazy and then we have weekend and then we are like i want to wake up late that's the same thing with plants as the weather changes they want to absorb less water more water they want to use water grow it changes so we need to adapt the schedule as per the plant and the plant will automatically be adapting itself to the season and the type of plant it is where it is kept the light it is getting and everything like that so here's a quick test this is a pink anglonema oh sorry this is a lipstick anglonema or chinese evergreen also it is known as it's a great plant to keep inside uh, but more on this in the fourth segment you take your finger and you just need to dip it in now do you see the soil has stuck to my finger now what does that indicate soil sticking to my finger essentially is an indication that the layer till where i got my finger down is wet right this means not to water the reverse may not be true that will come to later but if you are the soil is sticking to your finger what it means is the top layer is still has water and as we learned there are three ways plants lose water and one of them is evaporation and water evaporates first from the top layer so if the top layer still has water definitely the layers below have water and this is definitely a no water situation you do not need to water this plant more plants are killed by overwatering and don't let that be your plant but what about the reverse if the if the soil doesn't stick to my finger does that mean i can water broadly speaking i would say yes but you have to use your discretion and experience so what i like to do is if i see a plant which has a top layer of soil dry i'm like okay maybe in a 3 to 4 days i'll water it why because most of the plants can survive dry spells and i don't know how much water is there and most of the plants would really love dry spells because that allows their roots to breathe when you give a dry period to a plant's root they don't have any water sticking to them they are able to breathe a bit and that is really beneficial for 
two things. One is for root growth, but also for keeping unnecessary diseases away from your plant. Just like anything wet that you might keep in your kitchen or any other storage wrapped in a plastic, it is going to get some mold or bacterial infection kind of a thing. The same thing happens with roots if they're always going to be inside water. Either they're going to rot or they're going to catch on to some infection. And that's why for me, I always like to just phase out the watering. And so much so that for my snake plant, this one, I water it like once a month. And the same thing with this ZZ. This ZZ again, I, I, I would water it like, look at it, it's bone dry right now. But probably it will go back another week and it's going to be fine. So even though I water it so less, I can see some new growth happening and I'm really happy about it. So, when you water, do you water thoroughly less number of times or should you water more number of times keeping the in account that the top layer is dry but small amounts of water? Which one should you prefer? You understood the two options. I can water say one liter today and then water after two months or two weeks. Or I can water just 100 ml today and then 100 ml after two days, then 100 ml after three days. Which one would be a better option for the plant? Always, always water till it starts to flow from the bottom. So if I was to water this, let me take another plant because as we said, we don't need to water this one. Okay, so when I water this, it should flow from the bottom like this. If you always adapt to this rule, you know what is also happens is you are able to check a drainage of your pot because if, if you are pouring a lot of water and it's not draining out, at least you know there's some issue with drainage and you will spot drainage issues much faster. But why this works very well? Why, why should we always put water till it starts to drain out from bottom? The answer is simple. We talked about how does a plant absorb water and minerals uh, during the photosynthesis process is through the roots. Now, if you are going to give water only in the top layer, the roots cannot and will not go deeper. And that's a problem at multiple levels. But let's start with the basics. First of all, if your roots are not going deep, what it means is plant doesn't have a good support structure. And also if the roots are not big and deep below, you will not get a big plant on top because the plant is feeling that I'll topple over if I grow any bigger. The second thing is, if you encourage your plant to develop deep roots like this by watering it thoroughly, so that the roots are developing till the bottom to in search of water. Then what happens is imagine you have a break of say two weeks, you're traveling somewhere, you cannot water your plants at that time. But at the bottom layer of your pot, this will still be some moisture. And because of your this good habit before, now you have roots that, that can actually take that water and make the plant happy. So that's very important. I think that's one of the reasons why my plants survived during the lockdown period, six to seven weeks. The plants in office, we could not water, but really surprisingly, most of them came through. Some of them were stressed and we'll cover that in session three about reviving dead plants or how to deal with troubled plants and how to know that. But I think one of the reasons is that because we always water thoroughly, the roots were there, the water was there and they were happier plants. The third reason why we should always water till the bottom is because that way you keep the soil, uh, you keep the drainage of the pot intact. If you always water uh, for the top portion, the bottom soil has hardened. Now, because you are pouring very less water, you never expect it to flow out. So you will never know. 
Now comes monsoon, there's heavy rain, the water gets clogged, you don't know there is water sitting in your pot and your pot doesn't have a good drainage and now you have root rot. And that's why, simple thing, water till it comes out from the bottom, you, I know you'll make a mess, but you know how you won't make a mess? If you water them at a very uh, less frequency and then you should water them outdoors, you take them to your balcony once a week now what is happening if you're going to take them out to your balcony once a week what is happening to your plants that you were keeping inside higher intensity of light for 20 not 24 hours but for say 10 hours now you just divide it over the week so every day basically you have added one and a half hours of higher intensity light and you watered them and they can use that water probably in that one day or two days, much more. Happy plants. This is what I call as rotation. I really love to do that. There are many ways to do it. Two very popular ways to do it is A, have your plants inside your home. Take them out for one or two days, right? Mostly weekends. The second option to do is have two sets of plants. Keep one set out for say one week, 10 days, 15 days or whatever period you like and have the second set inside and then switch and it's not that complicated it's not like you have to be really put in effort and have a huge collection it can be very simply saying okay I have a ZZ plant and I have a money plant for some days I'm going to keep ZZ plant on my table and for the rest of the days I'm going to keep money plant on my table and I just forgot I have a money plant and I just thought I'll show you this one looks I'm really liking this one. So yeah. One of the last things about watering I would say is before we go to origin of plants and if we understand light and water, this last segment will just seal the deal of you understanding, I would say 80% of things to do with plants. When you water, water the soil and not the plant. I'll tell you that, especially in plants like these. Do you see this plant? Now what will happen if I water here? The water will get stuck and it will develop something called as a root or uh, crown rot. What is a crown? Let me take this out. Okay. So imagine I have it in soil. Is it visible? Okay. Imagine I have it in soil. So this portion from which the whole uh, thing is coming, that is known as crown. So this is the root part. This we have discussed the root rot part. But there is also a possibility of crown rot. Right? And don't get confused with the word rot. It doesn't always mean rotting. But it means an infection which comes with rotting and then it onsets rotting right so it can be a bacterial or a viral infection oh sorry bacterial or fungal infection uh, it can be so always water the soil right same thing with this snake plant right so if I water it from here water will get trapped so snake plant spider plant your succulents and anything which is almost like a flower like structure or a bird nest kind of a structure be very wary of putting water which can get trapped so what do i do i take this and i water it from the side now we need to water evenly what will happen if you don't water evenly the roots will not grow in all directions and if the roots don't grow in all directions then your plant will not have a good support system. So whether you are watering or whether you are putting fertilizer sticks always put them evenly except obviously if you have a 4 inch pot and the stick needs to be only one but if you put more sticks always put them evenly so that the always give incentive to roots and shoots to go in every direction. That's the most important thing. right? And it becomes easy when we understand why they want to go in all directions. It's for to get water, to get mineral, 
then the leaves get sunlight right and we'll come to that so we'll take a short pause for my tea and for the message and then we'll be back and we'll just connect all this together talking about origin of plants why succulents and snake plants don't require water why other plants do and how you can make them healthier Welcome back, welcome to a Houseplant Masterclass with Lazy Gardener and let's talk about the origin of plants. I think this is one of the most misunderstood, less known but the most important thing. Let me start by saying one thing and I'm going to put this on as an Instagram post also. I was making, as I was making this post in the morning, I'm like, okay, let's dedicate the whole segment to this even though we are planning to do it the next week. I'm like, this is where it needs to be. There is nothing called as an indoor plant. There is nothing. And I think this vocabulary needs to be changed for the benefit of everyone. Because I'll tell you what. When you call it an indoor plant, what are you saying? You are saying I'm going to put my definition to define plants. Plants don't even know about the way we live, right? All they care about is light and water. Light, water. So that they make food. Right? Okay. If we don't call them indo plants, then what do we call them? We call them low light plants that we can keep indoors. Right? And this is a very important thing because it changes a lot of uh, uh, misconceptions. Like say jade for that matter. Right? I had put out this post a couple of days back and a lot of people were saying my jade died because I kept it inside. Uh, my jade died because the nursery person told me it is indoors. I keep my jade indoors, but only for a few days. So this is the plant, right? And I can keep it inside because I have a huge window here. I keep it in my office where I have two windows and that's the difference. We just talked about light is very relative inside. And that's why I say we should talk not about indoor and outdoor, we should talk about low light and uh, bright light plants. Because you know what, my balcony outside actually gets lesser light than what my room does because of the way it is uh, facing and the shadow that it is getting from another house and things like that. So always, 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 let's just remove the definition of the word indoor plants. And let's focus on low light plants. Now, if we remove this definition, then a natural question comes, then how am I going to shop for these plants? And that's another thing that I'm going to start with. And that is, when you go to a nursery, please do not ask the person a couple of questions. Don't ask them, show me indoor plants. Is this indoor plant? Can I keep this in my bedroom? I don't know. Does your bedroom have a window? Maybe. Maybe your bedroom has a full wall of windows, right? So these questions make absolutely no sense and these should be absolutely avoided. I'll tell you why. I, I go to an nursery and over time they've become friends and they say, whenever somebody asks for the first time, I tell them, Jade, you should keep in sun. But then they ask again and then they say, but I read online that it is an indoor plant and then he's like, if they're insistent, I'll say, yeah, yeah, you can keep them indoors. So how do you know which plants to buy that that would be low light plants? So this is the typical structure of any nursery. You walk in, initially it is going to be an open space, a space that is open to the direct to the sun and then you keep walking in, there is a green net on the top. That net provides shade. Now you need to keep walking further inside the net because just at from where the net starts, 
those plants are still getting some good sun and some good light we need to keep walking we need to go to a place and we need to pick plants from place which are well covered with that net because i'll tell you another re reason like syngonium like money plant uh like snake plant these plant can actually do well in both low light and bright light but if i buy a plant from nursery which was raised in very bright light and i bring it to a low light condition it will not last but if i get a plant which was raised in low light condition and i bring it to my low light condition much better chances of it surviving and then thriving and then me feeding and water and love it will grow so we have established two things there is nothing called an indoor plant it's low light plants then when we go to a nursery person we are not going to ask for indoor plants but where do these low light plants come from and that is the important thing now let me pull out some of the plants so this is one we are going to take out okay let's take this one this is a syngonium this is a snake plant and okay let's take this monster up okay let's also take this money plant okay first of all do you see any similarity between these two plants thoda zoom kare is there any similarity that you see between these two plants yes that's the stem that they have it has small aerial nodes aerial roots i'm sorry they have nodes and from the nodes they have small aerial roots coming out and that is actually and precisely what links these plants together as i just was talking that the plants from the tropical rainforest from the bottom feeding layer all these indo plants that we see and we keep inside our home the low light plants the origin they have an origin from the tropical climate now let's go back let's first we went to the biology class of our school let's go to the geography class of our school and one thing that is there is you have these huge trees which form the top canopy right now only very filtered light is able to come through to the bottom the top canopy is so thick that when it rains and it rains a lot the moisture gets trapped inside and creates humidity and that's why these plants they have these stems with these aerial nodes and they are there to grab onto anything i mean they'll find a tree they'll grab onto that they'll create new root system and they'll just climb that at your home they are pampered they they are being cared for in forest nobody cares for them they are not big trees they have to fight for themselves they are at the bottom most layer that's why they climb and they find light and then they create roots wherever they find moisture because of their origin there where they still struggle for light that's why they have adapted to something which we, uh, we they have adapted to a uh, climate or a environment that is similar to our climate inside our homes low light and they can do well it's not true essentially for snake so what is not true is let me just tell you so while these plants would still do very well in bright light bright uh, 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 say light if they receive but they would not like direct sun why do they not like direct sun it is because of the heat right so they don't like heat but they love light just remember one more thing every plant each and every plant will do better with more light you know why because photosynthesis more light more food more food more growth more growth again more food so absolutely there is no plant which loves low light is just that they can survive low light some of the plants can are optimized to create food even in lower intensity of light in lower amount of light so those are these plants 
Now, there's a quick thing that I wanted to share uh, when we talk about, say, succulents or, say, snake plant. Uh, so, I'm going to just cut this leaf. And I want you to see the, it has a thickness. Pass along. Do you see that? There's a fleshiness inside. Okay. The same is true for this one or any succulent for that matter. Actually succulent, you know, I mean the English word succulent means it, it holds, it holds water. The leaves here hold water. In snake plant, the leaves hold water. What about jade? Jade holds water. So whenever you see any leaf, I'm not sure if it's clear, but you know jade leaves. They okay. So they hold water. <clears throat> what does it mean when they hold water? Essentially, they are coming from an environment where they do not get enough water, and they have to keep water holding inside of them. Think of camel, right? It's the same kind. These are camel equivalent in plants. And that's why you have to water them very less. And I don't care if you find a new plant which has these kind of leaves, thick leaves, you can try to break them off, see them if they have something like fleshy or spongy inside, basically meaning they are holding water. Water them less then. Because whatever you are going to water them, they are going to absorb that and store it. Now you know what problem happens? Now this can be because of either because of heat, no water or overwatering. If you water a lot, the leaf would feel that it doesn't need to hold on to water any longer and it will dry out. Okay. So when you see snake plant like this, you know what you have done. But most of the times if you water it a lot, then the leaves are not serving any purpose of holding water because water is available now. So they are not going to store water and if they are not going to store water, they are not going to stay upright. They are going to fall down. So that is one way to understand the plants which do not need a lot of water. I am going to take one more point which kind of I forgot. Any plant that you see has this kind of a nodes coming out, uh, aerial roots coming out from here, you can be rest assured that you can put them in your homes, inside with low light conditions. You know why? Because as I said, that kind of depicts the fact that they had to fight for their existence and they most probably belong to a forest where they got very little light. So this is one tip. So you have wandering dew, you have syngonium, you have pothos, you have varieties of monstera, and uh, many more. All of them have one thing in common. They are wines. Turtle wine. So they have a, a wine. Actually not turtle wine. Because it doesn't have aerial roots. I'm sorry. So, But they have this wine flesh. And then you'll observe them. They'll automatically start developing a small hint of root. Just with the right conditions. So that's essentially what I wanted to discuss today. Let me just recap it quickly. First of all, I want you all to always start and think in terms of photosynthesis. Nothing else but photosynthesis. That's the only role of plants because what makes plant a plant? That they make their own food. Right? Two very primary things plants need to make food that is water and light. Right? How much light is the plant getting? Just do a 30 day average and just think of intensity and duration. How do I combine that and see am, is my plant getting enough? Can I improve that? Can I improve that in many ways? Can I improve that by rotating the plant? Can I improve that by adding a bulb or a lamp or something? Or can I move this plant closer to the window? Can I move this plant closer to the light? So that is the first very fundamentally important thing. 
Then we discussed about how do we kind of very quickly understand the intensity of light. Use a pen, anything so that you can see how strong or harsh the shadows are. The stronger the shadow, the higher the intensity is. Very useful. If you do photography, if you put flash, you'll know that. You want to diffuse the light so that there are no strong shadows. The same principle here. Then we are talking about the southern windows, the windows facing the south direction in northern hemisphere. You can use the app in your phone, will get more light. Just a tip, use it the way you want to for the point one and two. Then we talk about water and we talk about water, the thing that plant need to absorb water and the requirement of water will depend upon the intensity of light. But in addition to that, the origin of the plants is going to govern how, how much light or water does that plant needs. If a plant is going to be storing water within itself, then it is not going to require a lot of water because that's the climate it comes from. But if the water, if, or if the water, uh, oh, sorry, or if the plant is constantly searching for new places to grow like money plant or uh, syngonium with their aerial roots, they are hungry for water. But uh, light, they can do with low light. If you give them brighter light, they'll do better. So that's the wrap for today. We will be taking questions and answers for now after a message. But before that, let me just tell you, it means a lot that you came. Uh, I will be taking question and answer. I think that those should be super useful. I'm yet to see the questions. I will put on the questions right now and for the next week we are going to have the same timing it is going to be at five o'clock it is going to be on YouTube so if you have not subscribed to our channel subscribe to the channel so that next time even if you don't get the email or SMS or anything you will still get a notification that the live is happening and do consider giving a thumbs up if you enjoyed anything about the video and why I'm saying that is because we are very new to YouTube we just started YouTube like about six weeks back and you giving a feedback to YouTube that this video was good helps us to get in front of more people. So that's one uh, really good thing uh, that you can do for us if you liked anything related to the uh, plants that we talked about. Next week, we are going to talk about certain basic gardening uh, terms. We are going to talk about pruning and trimming and how to really prepare your plants for monsoon and also in general if you want bushier money plant if you want any plant to divide and things we'll be talking about pruning trimming and other gardening topics next week and that will set us up for the week three which is all going to be about uh, reviving dead plants and uh, getting to know which plants can be revived and how to work with them then week four is going to be propagation all about propagation how do you propagate plants and again this time too i want to go to the basics and tell you listen if you have a plant you will automatically know how to propagate it be it soil or water you will know the method because the plants have those clues so that's the thing that's our five session uh, master class this is vinayak from lazy gardener and you're watching houseplant master class episode one we'll be back after this message. Hello, first of all, thank you Mary Thomas, Mary Thomas says I've been there with you from the start. Thank you so much, uh, Shalu Priya. It's the first time I'm checking out the number of people who are attending and not expected. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, not only for coming, but for staying till now. It means a lot. So let me just give me get an idea. Uh, hi, Poonam Khulbe. Hi, Poonam Sharma. Uh, Okay. Okay. So this is a question that Sushil has asked and I'll just mention this because I'll be taking this in detail in a couple of sessions, but he asked, how do I know whether I've overwatered my plant? It's a very interesting topic. Uh, 
I think one of the simplest way, and we'll go deeper into it in following sessions, but I like to answer it here. Uh, one of the simplest way is that if you overwater your plants, your leaves and stems will tell you. So in plants like these, where you have these soft kind of stems, like this is Anglonema, this would tend to become sticky. And your leaf, when it droops, it will become sticky. It's not going to become crispy, it is going to become sticky. And for plants like this, which have a well-defined stem, uh, it's a creeper like money plant, syngonium, then what happens is your leaves start to become yellow or they become brown and they become brown but, but again they don't become crispy. So that, that's your tip. Essentially your leaves will tell the soft tissue of the plant will generally be the first signs of overwatering, right? And one of the first things I would say is move it to a bright space. Do not move it to a direct sun, but move it to a bright space. And we learned how to find bright spaces. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, I see a question here. Okay, so I, I'm sorry the message went up, but somebody was saying that I bought croton and the croton shed leaves and they cut the stem and they've put in uh, with honey and all. Propagation we'll talk about, but I'll tell you one thing. Whenever your plants lose leaves, do one thing very important. The same thing that we talked about nodes in money plant and others, it's very visible properly, but all your plants, hibiscus plant, your curry leaf plant, your... Uh, croton, all of them have nodes. Cut, snip the stem and then just water it well. By water it well, I mean uh, do not over water it, but just make sure that it's not drying out. Right? Uh, and why is that? Now that the plant doesn't have leaves, the only way it is going to get energy, it can't get sun right now. Right? It doesn't have leaf. There are two things that it needs, sun and water. There's no leaves. So it cannot get any kind of food preparation done. So it is going to absorb nutrition, minerals, f using water to get that first growth of leaves. So that's that's the important thing. Important thing, cut the stem, you have that, water it well, not over watering, well drained, put it in a bright but shaded area. Again, we don't put it in a sunny area because it, the soil will dry out very fast. And you have to go to office. You can't just keep watering it multiple times a day. Uh, my arrow, arrowhead pink plant color gets faded and looks pale. So basically that happens because of two reasons. One is any coloration that you have in your plants, right? Say when you have coloration in your plants, basically uh, these red colors and the deep colors, they all depend upon the light situation. Have you ever had a hibiscus plant which gave you an orange flower also and a red flower also and a pink flower also? I had. And that is essentially because of the changing season as the sunlight intensity changed, it changed color because of the red pigment, how much it is producing. So for pink syngonium to remain pink, one of the things is you have to keep the light conditions consistent. And the second important thing is you would need to feed it phosphorus and that is something we'll discuss in future sessions about the nutrition. That light and color are very closely related. If I start putting it in a very different light condition, this is going to change colors. So that's. I'll give you another example of this in general. Do you see this? This is a green leaf which is turning pink. And that's how most of the new leaves happen for plants, even with colored ones. This is light pink. This is a matured leaf. It is darker pink. That's the thing. Okay. How to take care of nerve plant? Rithika Sukhwani. Nerve plant phytonia, right? So uh, for nerve plant, what you should do is ensure humidity. I kept my nerve plant in a kitchen so that when we do dishes and all, at least the air becomes a bit humid. 
nerve plant needs humidity you can kill it in summers and winters also in case of lack of humidity uh nr ali says my ficus elastica or rubber plant died because of uh, ants i personally do not feel it might have died because of ants i'll tell you why because ants as per my understanding in general and experience ants do not harm the plants themselves now there are a couple of ways they can indirectly firstly they can take out all the soil right because they dig soil to make their nest whatever we call it so they can get the roots exposed to air because they're digging out soil the second thing is a lot of times the presence of ants also indicates that there is some other pest on the plant like mealybugs so mealybugs is a plant uh, is a pest that harms the plant but they also have a by product which is sweet and it attracts ants right and the third reason which can be and generally i find that in plants with very thick roots like say zz it can happen to sometimes like in ginger it happens ants can actually uh, dig into the root itself and then eat it up so in rubber plant i would most likely the reason would be and there's another reason this is a very interesting thing and it is very relevant to today's topic when you water your plant how do you ensure that the water is actually going through the soil right now if it is not going through the soil then you might ask what is happening where is it going so there can be couple of reasons one is there can be gap between the soil and the side of the pot and the water can just flow out from there right now even though you're watering and the water is coming out from the drainage holes it is not penetrating through the soil and if it is not penetrating through the soil the roots are not getting water the second thing that happens with ants is they make these holes and the water just goes through the hole without going through the soil i mean the soil is not able to absorb i think that is another reason why plants with uh, ants they tend to die because they're not getting any water we put water we see oh, water is coming out from bottom we are happy we move on but there is a, a short circuit or a shortcut that the water is taking and the plants are not getting any water okay okay srishti jain about poinsettia we have done a video on poinsettia basically poinsettia to turn red or or pink or white whatever it it needs 12 hours of darkness every day it needs 12 hours of darkness and only then it will help okay uh soil and nutrition we will cover in couple of uh uh sessions tora is asking about mushrooms i am so there are couple of plants which require really expertise i, I am not an expert in mushroom mushroom growing is a very different uh ball game altogether please do advise how to save lucky bamboo this is ronika sinha inside our home mine always dries up after few months even after changing water once a week this is a very interesting question uh and i think this might be the last question we take but hold on because this is a very important question firstly lucky bamboo is not a bamboo it's very important to understand lucky bamboo is not a bamboo it comes from dracaena family if you know song of india or uh, that's the same family that lucky bamboo comes from now i always like to take out lucky bamboo and put it in soil and that is how it does extremely well because if you get those packaged tiered lucky bamboos there is a huge problem in that firstly the stem that you have it can have only one direction to grow right so it can have a bud only coming from this direction but uh, actually speaking it can have bud coming from this direction but it will be blocked by this other thing am i making sense i hope i am that's why I always open the lucky bamboo up and then plant it in a soil that's the way to have a long lasting lucky bamboo now why do does it not last in water uh there can be many reasons uh firstly the chlorine or the other things added to water in general i have also asked people and they say they give a life of 2 years to 
lucky bamboo in water as it is meant for ornamental purposes and the way they package or uh, the how it is transported and all but i have found it to do extremely well in soil well drained soil low light it will do well so try that thank you so much you know what i'll do one thing we are going to end this session right now if you have any questions right as the session ends the live chat kind of goes away but put it down as a comment i'll try to incorporate that either in our next video or i'll make probably a question answer video in middle of the week before going to the next master class or we'll just reply to many of the questions it will be my personal endeavor to ensure that right now it is 6 o'clock so any questions that are coming in next 3 hours we will try our best to answer all of them that is something that i'm going to try so as we are going to end this live after this message just leave a comment as a question and i'll go through that and probably i'll do a question answer video which we'll upload by wednesday or thursday thank you so much thank you for coming if you enjoyed this please join us next week these five weeks five hours will be helpful it will be great thank you so much thank you for coming and take care you love plants i love plants taking care of plants is not that difficult and i'm going to help you fall in love with plants all over again i'm vinayak from lazy gardener and i bring to you house plant master class a series of five classes held live over five weeks starting 7 june i get a lot of queries every day from concerned plant parents and i always desired what if we can teach the basics the reasons why plants need light watering how to select better plants everything from basics i want to teach you how to know for yourself what does your plant need i'll teach you the basics and things that will make your plants dance sing and thrive so for happier plants join the free house plant masterclass see you soon and happy gardening